Can we go ahead with questions? Uh, Buzz, what went into the decision to make this the night that you were going to start, Mark, and were you at all surprised with the way he responded? Uh, Dre hurt his foot, and so uh, I think um, one of my favorite mentors is Jerry Wainwright. He was a longtime head coach who eventually was with us for a couple of years at Marquette, and he's been one of my heroes since I was a kid. And he always said, anytime there's something unexpected that happens, make as few a changes as possible to address the unexpected happening. So uh, obviously Dre has been running the point for us. And so I just thought that by allowing French to start, that was the least amount of change to Dre not being available. And I was not surprised. Um, there's no way that I think that anyone could ever question the intent of French's heart and whoever hires French uh, seven months from now, he'll end up running that company. Is, is that just kind of the epitome of, of a player that you're, you're looking for in your, in your program with uh, the similarities of just working hard to, to your maybe progression? Uh, I cheer for people who care. Um, I particularly cheer harder for guys who care, who maybe have some chip to prove that they're better than maybe the opinion of what people think. Uh, I love people that are for the team, not for themselves. I'm partial to guys who can think and play at the same time. And I love great teammates, guys that give dap, guys that uh, help one another up when they fall, uh, guys that have enough courage to tell the truth, even when it's not easy. I respect that. What went in the decision to uh, keep the players on the floor at halftime, and what was the, the message uh, as part of that? Uh, I didn't do it to embarrass them. Uh, that was the first thing that I told them. It's a long walk uh, from that court down through here, down this hallway, down that hallway, angle off, walk in the locker room, walk 20 more yards to where we sit, and then do the same thing. And so I always feel like thus far that I have so much to say that sometimes the content is overwhelming to them. And so I always feel rushed because of the clock. I feel rushed because of the clock in practice. I feel rushed because of the time we're allowed to be in the film room. I feel rushed. We got to hurry up and get back out there for the game. And so uh, the message was try really, really hard. The message was we need to get a shot attempt per possession. The message was try to get a shot attempt after rotation has been forced so that down the stretch of the game we could score a bunch of points at the free throw line. The message was when they shoot, act like the ceiling of Reed Arena is collapsing. And the only way that we can get out before the collapse happens is if we get the ball. And uh, I was taking a lot of breaths in between. I was really tired. And I just said, if you could just try really hard. Well, they obviously did. Um, will you talk about that stretch? Y'all you know, went on that 12-0 uh, run that proved to be decisive. And it started mm -hmm. with French hitting that three-pointer. And then he had that play where he kind of punched the ball away to save him for the dunk. Seems like all the momentum went to y'all right there. Um, Yes, sir. Um, he made play after play after play th that even the statistics don't reveal that contributed to us winning. Uh, I thought Nebo really helped. Uh, we put in a new offense. You may have noticed it. Um, and we had 
Fritz and Nebo on the same side of the floor. That helped. That was what led to that three that French made. That was what led to several of the baskets that Nebo scored on the block in the second half. What was the uh, reason behind putting in the new offense? Was it just as part of the scheduled um, implementation of, of, of sets, or was it something in, re, uh, in response to uh, Gordon being out? Uh, maybe a little bit of everything. Uh, we practiced on Monday, and we had 67 turnovers in practice. And so we tried again early Tuesday morning, um, and we kind of had a different practice where um, – five guys on defense, five guys on offense. And I was just drawing up every play that I've ever run as a head coach to see if maybe any of them would gain traction. We played uh, 48 possessions and we scored 13 times. That's 27%, that's not very good. But the highest percentage of success in those 13 baskets was off the play that I'm talking about. And it was also the lowest number of turnovers in that sequence of possessions. And so we worked on that today in shoot around and ended up running it as much as we ran anything else. Um, 67 turnovers is uh, not exclusively indicative of the talent on the roster. It's also indicative of the coach of the team. And so I'm trying to figure out anything that can help our turnover rate and trying to figure out anything that can help us get a shot prior to a turnover. And so whatever helps give them comfort, give them some level of freedom, yet discipline within that freedom, and potentially I think uh, that offense would shorten the game, which means that the opponent won't have the ball as much, which means they won't have a chance to offensive rebound at the rate they've been rebounding at. So a little bit of it. May, don't know, maybe can our offense help our defense? Um, a lot of what led to French's success was that offense, uh, same with Nebo. Uh, they've picked it up really fast, and they were wanting to run it before we were necessarily calling it. So maybe we can gain some traction. Defensively, Coach. You guys made it really tough for them to get the first that they wanted in the second half. Do you feel like you guys are kind of learning what you want them to do defensively? Because I know it's a totally new system and what they've been kind of used to. You know, I thought um, – thanks for saying that. I think that – I think that we did a good job categorically over the game. 30% uh, in the first half, 33% in the second half. Those are really good numbers. Um, we were able to string together some – consecutive stops. I think when we don't get in rotation, uh, in other words, you stay between the ball or your man and the basket, if we don't get in rotation, we'll at least have a better chance when they do shoot to get the rebound because we have inside position. I think that helped some tonight. I think when we got into rotation tonight, it was more – intense, it was more deliberate. And when we got into rotation, we did a good job stopping the ball or stopping the bleeding. And then the guys not involved in the rotation did a really good job of getting to the next pass and contested. We contested 81% of their threes, which is easily the highest percentage we've had. So if they shot 32% for the game, I would say their first shot field goal percentage was for sure in the low 20s, and that's encouraging. We just got to figure out how we can continue to limit the number of second shots they get. Uh, they had 14 tonight. That's uh, a similar number. 
but four of those were dead ball offensive rebounds, which means the ball was in the air. It was a loose ball in the air, and Texas A&M and Troy are trying to get it, and Texas A&M hit it last, and now it's their ball out of bounds, but at least we get our defense set. And that's the highest number of dead ball offensive rebounds we've had through four games, so that's good. Uh, just, for a to, more. just to clarify a couple things. Um, did, Thanks for being nice. You're a nice person. I'll try to be. But did, uh, Who do you work for? Lucci. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> did uh, uh, did, did uh, Dre, can, can you say when he hurt his foot? Was it yeah. Uh, we practiced. He hurt his. Uh, he complained of pain in his foot. Uh, 18 minutes into practice on Monday, had an X-ray on Tuesday morning, immediately after practice that he did not practice, and uh, we'll go back to the doctor on Monday after being in the boot to determine what the next step is. And, then, uh, and within what I know, it's not good. What would, how would you have described your uh, mood or emotion at halftime? Uh, the, mm, the only talent I have is I care. That's it. And uh, I told the kids um, at training camp, that would have been the weekend before we played Alabama in football, that uh, my blessing is my curse. And that's the same for everybody. And so as much as you would think that Twitter says that I'm impatient, I'm actually the most patient person you know. But my blessing is I care a lot about people. And my curse is, is I care a lot about people. And so uh, my mood at halftime is I'm for you, but no matter what you would think, we're not trying hard enough. And so if you want to get in a contest, I want you to try as hard as I'm trying to help you. And then we'll have a better chance. Now, now, in, hindsight, now in hindsight, uh, seeing how the game turned out and seeing uphand Coach Cross's team, uh, what did it mean to you to be able to, I know you don't necessarily like playing your former players, but did it mean something to you to be able to? Yeah, uh, in, uh, in hindsight, I would have asked Scott Woodward or J-Mo or Ross Bjork to allow me to pay the buyout, uh, to allow me personally to pay the buyout. Uh, I was 21 years old doing a home visit. He was 19 and a half. I've known him his whole life. Uh, Jermaine Johnson, his assistant was the first point guard I ever signed. Uh, I remember standing on the used car lot where his dad sold cars. Trying to convince his dad to let him come to UTA and play in a theater. And uh, I was making $100 a week. And uh, I was promoted to a recruiter without deserving it. I was promoted only because one of the assistants made a personal mistake. And it's not lost on me or ironic to me how all this has played itself out and so I'm humbled by it all sorry for being emotional I'm bankrupt emotionally right now but I'm thankful for it all and uh, I want him to win every game his team was uh, much better than we were a uh, better execution, a much better flow, a much more distinct style of play. 
they play at Indiana for a hundred grand on Saturday evening, commercial back to Troy, Alabama. I'm sure that's a connecting flight. On Sunday, they play a team you've never heard of in their guarantee game on Monday, and then commercial flight all day yesterday to get here. And I listened from the practice gym last night from seven until 9.30, the energy that he has his guys playing with through four games, and I stand at attention. He's the, he will be, the time will tell. He's the only coach that's ever been at UTA that left with the highest winning percentage. He's won 58% uh, of his games in his college career. I've only won 25 more games, and I've played a lot more guarantee games on the good side than he has. And he's only lost, uh, whatever, 20 more games uh, than I have. And he played a minimum of five guarantee games every year at UTA. He's been to the NIT twice. He's been to the NCAA tournament once. He's never cheated. He was a two-time academic All-American at UTA. And he played more minutes than any player in the Southland Conference as a senior in college. And so whatever the contract said that Texas A&M had already signed, my wife would not have been in agreement as cool as she is, but I would have paid for it because I don't like the emotion of it. Thanks, Thank much. you.